Recent research by physiotherapists has shown that advice and pelvic floor muscle exercises are beneficial for women who have suffered an obstetric fistula, reducing the chance that they will continue to leak urine following successful repair surgery. Ideally, the advice should be given and the exercises taught before the fistula is repaired, but this may not always be possible. It's essential that pelvic floor muscle exercises are taught correctly, as it's easy to get them wrong, in which case they won't help and might even make symptoms worse. This and further information on pelvic floor muscle exercises is discussed in detail on an earlier video in this series. This is a model of a woman's pelvis, and my hands show where the pelvic floor lies in layers. There's not only muscle, but also connective tissue, fascia, which is influenced by pregnancy and which can be damaged during childbirth, as can the muscle and its nerve supply. This may occur during any labour and birth, but without doubt, women who suffered a prolonged obstructed labour and obstetric fistula are at a far greater risk of significant damage and resultant problems such as persistent urinary incontinence, even when their fistula has been successfully repaired. Once a woman knows how to tighten her pelvic floor muscles correctly, she'll benefit from advice on how often to exercise, how many exercises and so on. Opinions vary about this, but evidence-based guidelines suggest that pelvic floor muscle exercises for women with urinary incontinence are practiced three times a day. On each occasion, the woman should contract and relax her muscles at least eight times. In practice, this regime might be varied. Some women with very weak muscles might only manage a few very short squeezes. A woman with stronger muscles might manage more than eight long squeezes. To strengthen their muscles, women should be encouraged to carry out the exercises on each occasion until their muscles start to tire. They'll hopefully be able to feel that their squeezes are getting weaker or shorter, so will know when to stop. As they practice the exercises each day, they'll notice that gradually they can do more contractions and hold each one for longer. Women should be advised that progress can be slow. It can take four months or longer to strengthen the muscles significantly. If women are leaking urine with coughs, sneezes and physical activities, it may also be advisable to practice some fast contractions Squeeze and lift up and forward, hard and fast, then let go completely, and repeat up to 10 times. Once women have recovered from their surgery, it's likely that they will want to return to their previous level of activity. It's important that this is a gradual process, and the pelvic floor muscles can contribute greatly to protecting the operative site and surrounding structures from unnecessary stresses and strains. Women should be advised to contract their pelvic floor muscles and keep them squeezed when they lift, do light work, change position, cough, sneeze and laugh to reduce pressure on the site of their operation, the pelvic organs and their pelvic floor. Women will be warned against strenuous activities in the weeks and early months following their repair surgery and it's important that they follow this advice. When they do eventually return to their previous levels of activity, they should continue with their pelvic floor and muscle exercises and tighten the muscles during strong exertion to support the area and the pelvic organs. Some women experience difficulty emptying their bladder completely after repair of their fistula and following removal of their catheter. An indwelling catheter may be required for another period of time, or the women may learn to catheterize themselves intermittently. In some cases, more simple advice can help ensure adequate bladder emptying. Women should be encouraged to take time when passing urine. If they're using a toilet, they should ideally sit down and relax to encourage good emptying. Some people find it helps if they can place their feet on a step or similar, about 15 centimetres high, so their knees are higher than their hips. After initial urination, it can help to then stand up and even move around for 30 seconds or more before trying to pass more urine, known as double voiding. This might even be repeated. 
triple voiding. Constipation is not uncommon amongst these women, either infrequent bowel motions or difficulty passing a stool or both. Bowel motility can be helped by early mobility post-operatively, plus an adequate intake of water and dietary fibre. Advice that should be available from an appropriate healthcare clinician. Further advice can also help. If women feel the urge to empty their bowels, they shouldn't ignore this. If they go to the toilet at this time, then bowel emptying may be more successful. They should ideally not try to empty their bowels if they feel no urge, as this is less likely to be successful and may strain the area. If women are using a toilet, they should sit down and try to relax their pelvic floor muscles. It may help if they elevate their feet on a step or another object so that their knees are higher than their hips. Breath holding during defecation should be avoided. It can help to relax the abdominal muscles and bulge the lower abdomen and waist outwards during an expulsive effort. Some women who've suffered an obstetric fistula and undergone repair surgery will experience pain. Immediate post-operative discomfort is not surprising, but longer-term pain has also been reported. A woman may report pain in various areas of her body, related to the labour and childbirth itself, problems which developed after this, possibly related to inactivity, resulting in muscle or general weakness, even joint contractures, or as a consequence of the fistula repair surgery and post-operative recovery. As shown on this slide, common sites of pain are the legs, back, pelvis, or the vaginal, vulval, or perineal area. In each case, appropriate analgesic medication may be indicated. When women return home following surgery, it's essential that they're offered help with day-to-day -day activities and work which might normally be their responsibility. This will enable them to gradually increase their activity levels and may help their pain resolve. Physiotherapy or treatment by other medical professionals can help to resolve pain, but may, may not be available in many settings. In the absence of access to such services, there's still advice which might prove helpful. Women may experience pain in the vagina, vulva or perineum for various reasons. Women who have previously undergone female genital cutting may be particularly at risk. The area may have been significantly damaged by obstructed labour and consequent tissue damage due to vascular and neurological trauma. There may be a great deal of scar tissue. Following fistula repair surgery, there may be more or different scarring and the vagina may be shorter than normal or even closed. If there is persistent incontinence of urine, then the resultant wetness may also cause soreness. Some women will experience pain during sexual intercourse. Dyspareunia. Pain may be at or near the entrance to the vagina, or it may be deeper inside. Women will have been advised by their doctor or nurse to wait several months before resuming sexual intercourse, and they should follow this advice with support from their husband. Some fistula centres may have a nurse or other healthcare professional who advises women on how they might gradually stretch the vaginal tissues if they're tight. In some cases, Pain may be related to pelvic floor muscle that does not relax well. This failure to relax may understandably be worse if a woman experiences pain or expects to experience pain with sexual intercourse. In addition to practicing pelvic floor muscle exercises regularly, women should be encouraged to concentrate on relaxing the muscles. They should do this after each pelvic floor muscle contraction as they exercise the muscles and also during any sexual contact. So, in summary, pelvic floor muscle exercises can reduce persistent urinary incontinence following repair and, if possible, teach the exercises preoperatively. Carefully explain pelvic floor muscle exercises as women may get it wrong. The exercises should be carried out three times a day, about eight contractions each time. Women should contract their pelvic floor muscles on the occasion when there's increased pressure on the area and the times when they might leak. For example, with coughs, sneezes, changes of position and physical activity. 
It takes time to improve muscle strength and function, four months or more, so women must be encouraged to persevere. If incomplete bladder emptying is a problem, this must be addressed. Double or triple voiding may help. If women are constipated, offer appropriate advice. Pain, sometimes chronic, is not rare, and this should be addressed. <laughs>